System starting up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to another episode of Technical Defects. I'm Joe, your host. We've got our new co-host, Danny B, and we've got the lovely Christina Elise as a guest. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you this evening? Actually, I guess it's still daytime over on your coast. Late afternoon, early evening. I'm very well. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, one of the things that has been coming up recently uh, on a lot of feeds, a lot of horror fans, uh, Obviously, we know some people know you from Child's Play 2, 90210, ER, your book, uh, so many other cool things. But this has been coming up a lot. What can you tell us about that? I can tell you that I do a really a fuck ton of interviews. I do one or two a month, and they're almost always Chucky centric. Um, and they're for various size blogs and channels and, and publications and stuff, most of them pretty small, actually. So most of them, I mean, I, I've probably done 50 or, you know, and they don't tend to get a lot of traction because for a lot of reasons that aren't interesting. But um, I, you know, I, I had no reason to think that that one would be seen by more eyes than any other. Not that I would have spoken any differently had it been. I mean, if I was on ET on TV, you know, I might have spoken a little bit less um, with less of a sailor's <laughs> mouth. But that's how I speak in general. If you read the longer interview that I did, the whole interview, which the title of it was, I think, Chucky's Not Child's Play's Only Badass, which is a fucking awesome title for a, a piece on me. Um, I swear in every single one of the answers in that interview, I, I just, I fucking, I, I, that's how I talk. So but when you sing about that one answer, and it seems like I just unhinged with anger because there's so many swears in it. Um, that said, the sentiments, uh, swears, removed, I stand by. I don't know what other reaction to a competitive, a competing Chucky project, somebody in the exist, the original Chucky franchise is supposed to have. I mean, it's clearly, it's clearly disrespectful of Don Mancini and his 30 years of investment and an evolution of the, of the, of the franchise, you know, going from horror to through into comedy and back into horror and keeping it alive and it's thriving and the last two cult of Chucky and Chris Chucky did really really well so do I and I think it's not this timing is not a mistake I think the fact that the cult and curse did so well and that there's a series TV series in the in development is exactly why MGM is doing it clearly the Chucky brand has a lot of life left in it and they're just capitalizing on that um and I still stand by what I said. It's fucking uncool. It's uncool to it's uncool to undermine Don's empire, and it could have derailed the TV series, which would have really really sucked. Because I think that's an exciting opportunity for everyone for Don to get to write ten hours of story and, and air it in ten weeks rather than you know an hour and a half movie every three years. And uh, it's a great it's a great opportunity for us, the actors, to get to be as a family together for that much time and shoot a. I mean, assuming we're all involved to the degree I think we all would like to be, um, it would suck if it had been undermined. So far, it has, doesn't seem like it has been, but that would have sucked. So that was where my rancor, uh, where from whence it came. Uh, it's amazing. They they kind of concentrated on one thing and one thing only is that yeah, it's an unbelievably huge dick move is what all. <laughs> it is, though. Oh, no, I agree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's what they all tended to just concentrate on. Um, we've well, got. They also a used a, different adjectives to describe my mindset or, or verbs to describe what I'm mean. rage. I'm raging. I'm scary mad. I'm thrashing. I'm like really dramatic titles where unapologetic unapologi unapologi slams is not that crazy sounding, but there was some that made me sound like I was, you know, out in the street with torches. <laughs> Some crazy rage just going off about it. Yeah. Some crazy bitch out there going off. 
uh, what we do in the show is people tend to comment and we pull the comments up and I'm not seeing any real comments, just a lot of people showing a lot of love for you. Uh, Julian, Courtney, lots of hearts. You're, you're. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Ah. I, I've never seen these like many that. hearts on the show. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Thank you. Maybe because they think it's a fucking dick move too. <laughs> I think I probably agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, something that Danny did some research on that I didn't even know about. I mean, I was uh, aware of Delightfully Delicious, the Lovely, and Video Vegan, but Danny brought to my attention this book. How long has this been out? I think I, I think I put it out in 2012. Nice. What can you tell us about that? Um, I did it. Uh, it's. I did a um, I did a spoken comedy piece at a theater in LA called the Upright Citizens Brigade uh, in like 2010 or so, and um, friends and I wrote the piece. A com it was supposed to be a 2,000 word comedy true life piece, and so I did it and I read it. And my friends were like, "Oh, it was really funny. You should have shot it because it's funny, and your agents don't think you're funny, so it'd be a great way to show them that you are." So I did it again and I shot it. And I posted that on. Facebook and then somebody else saw it and said, well, that's really funny, but it looks really ugly. You should make a short film out of it. So I did. The short film can be seen. It's a 10-minute comedy that you can see at Bathing Book, B-A-T-H-I-N-G book.com. If you go to the film tab, you can see the 10-minute comedy there of the same title. And then I did 100 film festivals with that film. And at the end of a two-year run of film festivals, someone said, you know, that's really funny. If you have, if you can come up with more stories like that, if you can write more material, material in that vein, you should write a novel. And so I did. So the so the movie works as a 10, even though the movie predates the book, it works really well as a 10 minute trailer for the book. So you can get sort of a sense of the tone. It's dirty comedy, it's not erotica. It's like, it's stories of awkward, regrettable, disgusting sex with disgusting, <laughs> regrettable men. Uh, I just, I didn't, I wrote it sort of stream of consciousness. I wrote it really quickly and I wrote it without knowing where I was gonna go when I launched it off to begin it. Um, and I, but I, my only goal was to write the funniest book ever written. I wasn't trying to cure cancer. I wasn't trying to write the great American novel. I'm not sure if you can hear that helicopter. <laughs> um, but I was just trying to write a funny book, and I'm certain that I have succeeded at that. It's I, the short, funny. so funny. I, I watched, I've watched it like three times of now, course. and I laugh till I cry every time. And I didn't realize how relatable I think it is. I think that's what makes it stand apart from so many others. So I know it's won over what 20 awards that it's actually yeah. won. Um, it's just incredible. I think there's so many women out there who watch it and are like, Oh, I've been there. I don't think I'm a circus freak. And, um, and I, and I think the book is even more so the book is way more graphic and way, I think way funnier. I think it's much funnier. So if you like the short, you'll love the book. The book is, I have an promise you the book actually. will make you laugh out loud. Like literally, you'll have to put the book down to stop laughing at least three times. <laughs> I am so excited for the book. That's a lot of bragging right there I just did, but it's, it's the proudest achievement of my life. Well, that's very cool. Well, you know, and being an author, that sets you apart. You know, that's something that you had to really work at yourself and you really had to put, you know, so much time and energy into that. I mean, that is an incredible achievement. Have you thought about doing a second novel at this point? Yeah, I have not ready to do it yet. Um, you're right. You hit the nail on the head, though, why it's so satisfying. Everything else, or acting and other things in the film industry are really collaborative, and that's a wonderful thing. Collaboration is fantastic, but the book was not. I didn't even have an editor, so it's entirely me. So if you love the book, I get all the credit. If you hate the book, I get all the blame. <laughs> just It's just purely my creativity without any, um, you know, any fiddling from outside sources. I'm proud. incredible. I've got another comment here that I'm going to pull up and Sam, cheers, Christine. Welcome, Danny. Exciting to have Christine on the episode. So nice to have met you at Monster Mania. Thanks for everything you give back. Well, that's sweet. I don't know how much I'm giving back, but uh, but thank you. Well, we definitely appreciate you having me on this show, and we consider that giving back. Right. Speaking of which, um, cons, what do you have going on? I'm doing Son of Monster Palooza here in Los Angeles. Uh, I think it's the second weekend of September. 
and I'm doing one in the, the third weekend in October in Manchester in the UK, and I'm doing Spooky Empire in Florida at the end of October, and that's all I have for the year. Where is Spooky Empire in Florida? Orlando. Orlando. Okay. I may not actually go to that one. I'm only about an hour and a half south east of Orlando. Show. Cool, cool. Um, you, you have so many cool things going on. Uh, Video Vegan, can you touch base on that? So Video Vegan is, is videovegan.com is the, is the URL to get you to my channel, which is delightful, delicious, to lovely. And that was born of, I'm, I'm a big food person. I love to eat. I've always loved to cook. And I'm a photographer. So for years, I would like make food for myself and then post it on Facebook. And people would be like, oh, it looks really delicious. I wish I knew how to make that. Or what is that? How do I make that? So one day, about six years ago, I woke up on the July 5th and I was like, you know what I want to do? I'm going to start a food blog. And instead of answering these questions one by one, I'll just start posting these recipes. And, and I did that for until a year and a half ago. And I, I felt like the blog has sort of run its course and I felt stagnant just doing, the, doing it as a written thing over and over again. So again, on a whim, I woke up and said, today I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And I did. I didn't have a mic. I, didn't have a, I shot the first episode on my phone. I didn't, I didn't have a mic. When you watch it, the first like 12 or 13 episodes of the channel are technically challenged because I didn't, I just didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. I was just insisted that I had to start doing it or I would put it off and never do it. So by the 13th episode or so, the technical stuff falls in place and it's, it's lit well and it sounds good and everything. But it was a, just a, just an escalation, just the next growth spurt for the blog. And I do everything on the channel myself too, it's much like my book. So the channel, I make up the recipes. If, I, if it's somebody else's recipe, I give credit. But most of the recipes are my own. I cook them, I photograph them, I shoot it, I edit it. I do. I do it's entirely me. So again, like the book. If you if you don't like if you like my show, I get the credit. If you don't like my show, I take. <laughs> I think that's probably one of my very favorite things about you as an actress. One huge example, and just uh, as a person in general, what I look up to you the most about is that you have that personality that I've seen just like over and over in your career where you decide to do something and you just go full throttle and you do it and you kick ass at it. And then it's like you go on to something else, you know, between photography and being becoming an author and, and, and directing your own video shorts and acting. You know, it's, it's just incredible that you have that personality with just so much drive. It's like refreshing to see nowadays definitely thank you and the acting thing was sort of a spur of the moment decision in my life too i thought i wanted to be a director and i couldn't afford to go to film school i moved to la when i was 19 didn't know anybody didn't have any friends or any family or anything here and didn't even drive a car i took the bus everywhere for two and a half years and, and after two years of being here I go, i'm never going to go to film school it's just not a reality i can't afford to go to film school how can i get involved in filmmaking without any training or any skills I know I'll be an actor and then I can be on sets and learn how to do the things I want to do on the job. And because I looked, I was 20, 20 years old or so, but I really looked 15. I had a baby face and I really looked 15. So I played high school for about a decade and, uh, and I worked quickly because I was older and more sophisticated and they could hire me as an adult, but I was still played really young. Um, but that was sort of a whim decision too. And then once I started working as an actor, I realized I really loved it. And I was really intimidated by the other jobs on the set. I was really intimidated by what directors do and, and, and complete awe of what writers do. And so I was like, I'll take this job where all the work is done before I show up. They dress me, they, make my, they paint my face, and they give me the words to say. It's like the easiest job. So, Well, you have a really natural talent for it, though, which is just incredible. I mean, I'm a huge fan of your, of your work. Thank you. That is awesome. I got a couple of more comments that I need to sh put up there if I could, please. Uh, oh, Lynn is waving. Hi, Lynn. Hi. And we've got Selena with all these hearts. I'm telling you, <laughs> there is much I'll take, love. I'll take the love where I can get it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask one of those cliche questions. So dream role right now what would it be um i've never had an answer to that question that because nothing specific like i want to play joan of arc or that kind of thing well see i think figured you of all people would have like this great elaborate answer for that this question <laughs> oh well, the answer is like well, yeah i would like to be nikita in la femme nikita but that girl in the french la femme nikita crushed it i couldn't do a better job than she did you know <laughs> So there's roles that I admire. 
there's no roles that I look at and think I could have done that better. Very few that I look at and think I could have done it better. It's just, I just don't see, I just don't have that sort of ego, I guess. Um, but I will say that the answer I give is that I would like, a, I used to say a film, a big film career. I wanted a film career like Philip Seymour Hoffman. You know, I wanted, that's the sort of career I would like to have where you have, you do a lot of independent critically acclaimed stuff and you get to be involved in the bigger budget, big money projects as well. Uh, that's sort of, so if I could have somebody's career be a career like Philip Seymour Hoffman's or, I mean, look at Meryl Streep, but she's a, so, that was such a cliche answer. Everybody would want her career. But, um, so the answer to the question specifically is I would, I used to say film, now I'd say TV. TV's come a long way. TV is, cable has changed TV. The smarter, edgier projects are happening on, on Netflix and on Hulu and, you know, on Amazon Studios and stuff, making really edgy, great content used to be the Sopranos was the only show of that kind in existence. And now there's dozens of American ones and then dozens of Icelandic ones and French ones and German ones and Belgian ones. And I watch all these European uh, series too. So I would say an edgy, a, a smart, a smart, edgy uh, TV series that's popular and critically acclaimed. The best version of that in America would be Breaking Bad or the Sopranos. Nice long running shows that there are very few detractors of, you know, The Wire. The Wire is one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, so that sort of thing. Excellent. Awesome. Danny, so cool. what do you have for Christine? You know, I wanted to bring up some American hardcore actually with yeah. you. I am a fan of that documentary. And um, I wanted to kind of just talk to you a little bit about that, the punk movement and how it affected you at the, you know at the time and if it still has an effect on you today and what your feelings are on the music and that stuff. As far as the music goes, hardcore was never my preferred genre of music. I got sort of involved with the hardcore crowd in Boston because I was already involved in the broader punk rock scene and the broader music scene just as a fan going to see bands in tiny clubs. My parents took me. My parents helped me get a really legitimate fake ID and my parents brought me to these clubs to see these bands and in in going to nightclubs from the age of 14 until I left Boston at 19 and I probably was in clubs hundreds of times never had a single drink drink I didn't drink in high school with straight edge and um but the reason the hardcore thing became important to me because those they were my age the hardcore crowd were my age and the bass player for a band called SS or SSD Control was one of my first friends in that. I met him at a Dead Kennedy show at a little club in Boston. I was attending the show with my stepdad. And uh, he became my best friend very quickly. And then, then they started the band. And then the singer in SSD was my boyfriend all through high school. So I had this, like, for a girl, it's difficult to get in, to get so grandfathered in. And, and, and I was gifted the respect of everybody in that community just because I was there before they were and because they met me through two people that they admired. So... And these these people, these boys, and some other, and there was a few girls too, remain my chosen family to this day. They're my oldest friends. They were, they were very close and stay in touch and see each other. And we're like, it's that's not a community that dispersed, you know. But punk rock in in general, um, what was good? I was a you know I was a poor kid. I grew up on welfare. I was a poor kid. I was a chubby kid. I had glasses since kindergarten, um, and so I was not. The kind of kid that I was the kind of kid that should have gotten picked on a lot. I didn't for some reason. I think I learned earlier that if you let kids pick on you and you reacted, then they'd keep picking on you. If you didn't react, they'd stop. And so I, I didn't get picked on. I was, I was sort of allowed to float around in cooler kids' crowds. Like, you know, I'm talking in fifth and sixth grade where nobody's fucking cool, but but I always <laughs> stuck up for the underdog kids and I was really wanted to be invisible. I couldn't afford the kind of clothes. I couldn't afford an Izod stupid polo shirt and I couldn't afford Nikes and I couldn't, I couldn't have those things. And when I found punk rock, it, it, it allowed me to do, to express myself in a way that I hadn't before. And in that community, you were admired for being different, not from being a conformist. And conformity is not actually the core of who I am. I'm actually sort of confrontational and, um, and more creative than that. So what it did was, I, although I got then I became punk rock, I got picked on everywhere I went on the bus and it is, you know in the street waiting for the bus on the train and in school that I was people yelled rock lobster and whip it at me every day of my life and I would be threatened sometimes. But it was a, it was a 
pariahhood, you know, it was an outsiderness that I had chosen for myself. And so it didn't feel like being bullied. It felt like I was empowered and they were losers. And they just didn't see how fucking cool I was. <laughs> and so I was not threatened. I thought they were, it's, it's like being picked on now by a Trump supporter. I don't think that I'm less. I think that they're stupid. So um, that at such a young age, at 15 or so, to be, to choose to be an outsider and then be rewarded for it by a community of people that were like-minded, um, I think absolutely informs uh, who I am to this day. I still don't feel the need to apologize for myself. I don't feel the need, unless I do something wrong that I'm embarrassed by, but in general, I don't apologize for myself. I don't apologize for that, that remark I made about the reboot of Chucky. And I, you know, I don't, I don't see why speaking your mind, if it's your real truth, I don't know why you should ever have to apologize for that unless you're a fucking white supremacist or something and you're horrible and you should be <laughs> you know, legitimate, you know, wholesome <laughs> opinions. I don't think anyone should apologize for them. I really wish there was more people like you, especially like from my generation and the younger generations that are coming up. I wish we had more people like you, I think, to look up to and, and to learn from you. You stand out so much, you know, and that's, that's just, it's so incredible. To, well, that's to have very, some... very high praise. You're, you're embarrassing me. It's very sweet of you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a lot. Thank you. And that's why I was trying to stay out of it. <laughs> I thank you. Like I said, you make such an impact. I don't think you realize that the just from the people that I've talked to and you know, you you make a huge impact. Oh, well yay. Thank you. Hope a good one. And I ha I had one more question for you actually, if you have a um some time. Uh, I was curious if you do you have a like a favorite horror movie or series that that you've seen that stands out? Um, my stock answer to the favorite horror movie is The Exorcist. I was one of the first I, I mean, I think I probably saw Jaws before I saw The Exorcist, and Jaws is awesome. Um, but The Exorcist remains, I think, my favorite. Uh, more contemporary ones. I'm a fan of the one I, re I really liked. To let the right one in. I I was amazed that the American remake of it was really true to the original and al almost as good as the original, which was nice. Um. This one I think with Liv Tyler called is it called The Strangers? I, I think it's called. Um, I like Your Next. There's a film called Your Next that I really liked. I, I like ones that feel that are more um, psychological in nature. I'm not a big jump scare th slasher type. Those aren't my. That's not my favorite sort of horror movies. But I like this sort of broodier um, ones that feel like they could really happen and and they have some 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 stakes for the people beyond just, you know, don't go in the basement because you know, he's going to kill you there. Or don't go skinny dipping with your boyfriend because for sure you're going to fucking go, you know? So those kind of things don't interest me so much. They don't seem that smart. Well, it seems, it seems fitting because you, you're such an intellectual person, you know, like I feel like you, um, even when you meet other people, I know that you've made comments that you really read off of people's intelligence and, and intellect. And I think that's, a, that might have a lot to do with, with, that, that kind of movie choice. Maybe I'll take that. I'll, I'll thank you. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, jump scare. I don't. I don't like jump scares either. Like I don't like that adrenaline rush of a jump scare. You know, with that that it's not physically uncomfortable. Like literally, literally physically uncomfortable. That adrenaline <laughs> rush that, uh, that makes your chest hurt. I don't enjoy that feeling. I'm not a daredevil. I would never jump out of an airplane. I'm, I would never bungee jump. Like this is so, not. That's not what I enjoy. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Far too aware of my mortality, too. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, we're getting about to that point where we're going to be saying goodbye because we know you have a schedule to keep. Um, I apologize for my schedule, so if you want me to come on again in the future, if you have more questions you want to ask, I'd be happy to come back and answer them. I'm sorry to cut you off short. I feel really bad. No, I, again, I feel bad. We can do a two-parter. Two two <laughs> yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Before... Before we sign off, uh, where can we find you on social media and your projects? Um, the one-stop shopping would be bathingbook.com. If you go to bathing book, like take a bath, bathingbook.com, that's the book is there, the link to watch the film is there, and then if you go to the contact page, all my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all those handles are all there too. I am on Instagram pretty aggressively. Um, and I'm on Facebook pretty aggressively, but the Facebook has that weird limitation of 5,000 friends, which I'm always at and trying to like cut out people that have canceled their accounts and clean up some room. But, but the best place really is Instagram. And I'm, I'm Christina Lise McCarthy on Instagram. And was there a YouTube channel still? 
Yes, videovegan.com, videovegan.com, and that will lead you to my show, my channel. I, I guess it's an old lady thing to call it a show. Uh, it's The channel is delightful, delicious, and lovely, but the URL for it is videovegan.com. And real quick, your appearances again in, on cons are going to be? It's uh, Son of Lost Palooza in Burbank here in, in California um, in two weeks. Uh, and then I think the second weekend of October in Manchester, England, and the final weekend of October in Orlando, Florida at Spooky Empire. That is awesome. Well, I again, thank you for joining us. If you can hang out one moment after I end the broadcast, I'd greatly appreciate it. Danny, yeah. you did wonderful on your first show. Thank you very much. Thank and you. ladies and gentlemen, we will see you in two weeks. We're taking next week off because of the holiday. Thanks for joining us. Bye. History deleted.